deserved it. All right, guys, let's look at the packet. Tomorrow's like rain, I think, for sure. Or like whatever. Let me check. Say it's not supposed to rain. Yeah, tomorrow's supposed to storm on the office. Yeah. Oh, perfect. All right, if you would look at your packet, I also gave you another piece of paper. Um, as a way to like put all of this on one thing, so we'll go back to that. So like, put the paper. You don't need that right away. Um, do you have to know like all of this without notes? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Oh, sometime next week, a little test. What's today? Thursday. So like, like basically day? just like be able to look at it and graph it like right away. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So you're just going to be graphing, okay? Nothing more. There's no nothing more to really be asked for these kinds of questions. So the first page on the circles, were you guys okay? Those were pretty easy. That for like number three, the number B equals the diameter from the origin. Did you put that? Where? First page. Number three says, what effect does B have on the graph of the circle? Bigger. So I said B is the diameter. And like from the origin, I said, because like the circles always are like clinging on to the origin and being on the right or the left. And if B is negative, the circle's on the left side. And if B is positive, the circle's on the right side. Circles are the form r equals two cosine theta, or three cosine theta, or whatever. And this number, this is the b, right? This represents the diameter of the circle. What about the height? What's that? What about like the height? I mean, because that's the diameter and it's a circle, then whatever half that is, it's going to be the same diameter that way. Okay. Think you know. Um, and for number four, it says replace all of it with cosine. So if it was like r equals two, I'm sorry, replace all the cosines with sine. This is still the diameter. What was the difference between cosine and sine? From the y. Yeah, so it's kind of easy to know. Like this one went like this. This one went like this. So circles, pretty easy, are they okay? Yeah. All right. Rose curves were, I think, tricky to figure out. And I know we set it together in class at one point so people kind of know what the, uh, oops, the deal is. But for rose curves, we've got like four cosine two theta or four cosine three theta. So like all of a sudden, instead of that being a one in front of the theta, it's a two or a three or whatever. So for part three, how does the value of n determine the number of leaves? If it's even, it's two times. Yep. Exactly. So if this number is even, we have that many leaves. If that number is odd, I'm sorry, if, it, if this number is even, we multiply it by two, and that's how many petals we have, or leaves, or whatever. And if this number is odd, times one gives us how many petals? I don't know why, it's really kind of weird. I mean, I know why, it's because that's the way it works, but like, it's still weird. How do we know what angle will make it? <laughs> because it just works that way. How do we know what angle will make one? Like, um, you just try to make it, them evenly spaced. Is there always spaced. one on the other left after? Is there always one? No, not necessarily. If, if it's, because like if there's like, um, well, if it's sine, it's not necessarily on the x-axis. But here's what I do for rose curves. I just plug in like a couple numbers to try. Like I'll plug in like theta being zero and theta being pi over two or even pi over four. So I kind of have an idea of like where they go. Because once I know that there's like, say I know there's six petals, I'll plug in a couple numbers and that'll tell me where they are. So it makes it a little bit easier for, for me. Um, same with like number five when it says, graph that and graph the negative one, what does it do? Well, like, it flips it over the x-axis. Like, one of them was this, and then the other one was this. And this was positive and this was negative. But what I do is I'll just plug in a couple numbers and see. Like, if I'm not sure if it looks like this or this, put in theta equals, like, pi and see what happens. 
happens. And if the theta is pi, you get here, then you're this. If theta is pi and you get like a negative r, then you're out here. So I'll just try a couple numbers. Okay, we'll grab some of them by hand in a minute, but keep going. To Limasson. Here's the thing, Limasson, and then on the next side, the car, Deloitte or whatever. And there's also ones called, it's on this paper, a dimpled Limasson and a convex Limasson. tell the difference between all of them? What was the difference between Limasson and Picard, or whatever? Limasson has almost Yeah, one of them has like a little loopy thing. Like the Limasson, the regular one, is like, has a loopy. And then also like goes like this. It's like this kind of thing. And the cardioid was like a butt. Or a heart. Or a heart. That's a nice way to say it. But you also can have ones that don't come all the way into zero. And they didn't, they weren't on this package, they kind of forgot about them. They just sometimes come in a little bit instead of coming all the way into zero. And then you can also have ones that are just like flat-ish. They're like flattish. And the way to tell the difference, what I do is I plug in some numbers. But there are rules. Um, like the Limasan one, did you notice? The absolute value of that A was always smaller than the absolute value of B. Where on the cardioid thing, the absolute value of A was always equal to the absolute value of B. And then the other ones is going to change still. That's way too much to memorize. Like, I already feel confused by it. That feels like, why would I ever want to learn all that and have to remember it all? So what I do when I do them is, like if I'm doing the Lima sign, R equals 1 plus 2 cosine theta. I'm just going to plug in some points. Like, I know that the circle and the rose curves don't have a 1 plus anything. So that's how I remember them. So this doesn't have 1 plus or 2 plus or whatever, and there's nothing with theta. That means it's a circle. This doesn't have 1 plus or 2 plus, but it's got a number with theta. That means it's a rose curve. These all have a 1 plus or 2 plus or 3 plus or whatever. That means it's one of these. So for me, Instead of worrying about all of this, like memorizing stuff, I just plug in a bunch of numbers. I plug in a bunch of thetas and a bunch of r's and I see what I get. So let's do a couple together. Oh, before we do that. Spiral of arcing, or no. The, the lemon state or whatever, you're never gonna actually have to know that. You'll never be asked to NAP and I'm not gonna care either. But kind of like an infinity sign. The cosine one goes like around the x-axis and the sine one goes around the y-axis. Don't really worry about that. And the spiral of Archimedes, you do sometimes have to know. So again, you can just plug in some numbers, whatever you happen to have. R equals theta, plug in some thetas, it kind of makes sense. Like when theta is pi over 4, r is pi over 4. When theta is pi over 2, r is pi over 2. So like I just keep going out and out and out and out and out, and that's why it creates that. Same thing for the negatives, if theta is negative pi over 4, then I have negative pi over 4, so like I end up just in the same whatever. What if you go from like negative pi over 4 to pi over 4? Can I say it again? What, what if I plug go? in those two? Yeah. It's just not going to paint a great picture for me. I'd want more values in between them. That's why you want to know that like that has the general appearance of the, of the spiral. Okay. So, on this sheet, Take this for a second. Let's do a couple of these together. So this is like a good cheat sheet. If you were gonna cheat on a test, I would photocopy this to like your stomach. And then you can like look at it during the test. Just kidding. <laughs> like man, he's just checking out his abs the whole time. So let's go, let's look at the rose ones for a second. Can you grab this? First of all, you know it's a rose because it's not one plus or minus. It's not like one plus or three plus or six plus. There's no nothing added. And you should know it's a rose because it's got a number there that's not one. 
So how many petals does this have? Eight. Eight. Cool. Eight, and they go out, and they go up. What's that? And they go up there. And they go, they're three long. So this one, you've got to have two options. To fit eight petals evenly on a graph, <clears throat> maybe you've got one on each axis, and one like, well, this is a terrible drawing. Because they don't overlap like that. Okay, so either they're positioned this way, you've got like four on each axis and then one in the middle. But it's also possible like you've got two in each quadrant. So, which one do you think it is? The first one or the second one? Like if it's sine, I don't know, I don't have it memorized. I always just plug a point. Um, I think it's the first one, but then I'm not really sure, honestly. So for me, I go say like, all right, if I know I gotta fit eight petals and they've gotta fit evenly, I'll pick like theta to be um, zero and see what I get. Because if theta is zero, then I'm along like this part, and I'm either gonna get three, or I'm gonna get zero. Do you see the difference? How you can tell which one it is? Well, cosine would always be on the axis. Is it always? Oh yeah, yeah. cosine is on okay. the one. And then sine is just rotated off a little. So then so. it's going to be the second one? Yeah. Yeah, I just don't, so that's, to know that is great. Like if you are good at memorizing and knowing that packet, that's awesome. I'm not so good at it. So I'll always just check a point to be sure. So if I did check it, sine is zero is zero and three times zero is zero. So yeah. So when theta is zero, I have a point on the axis. So I'm with this one. Question. Yeah. Do you multiply like theta times four or sine of theta times four? Um, theta times four and then take the sign of it. Okay. Yeah, it's like this is together. Okay. Okay, so if it were this one, it would have been r equals three cosine four theta. Is that okay for rows? This is fine. Okay. So this, again, was just like a little cheat sheet for you. Now let's go to the other side. So I know it's lima sine when it's a number plus or minus the sine, or a number plus or minus the cosine. So the four types I put up before, you don't have to. I just didn't know if you'd want them. Let's do these two examples. R equals 3 minus 3 sine theta. So I know it's one of them, but which is the one where, like, these two numbers were equal? Do you remember which one it was? that cardioid or something, right? It's like yeah. a button. Yeah. Cardioid. When those two numbers are equal, it's going to look like a heart or a hind. If it's sine, does the butt go like this or like this? Sideways or up and down? I think it goes up and down if it's sine. And then if it's minus, is it boobies or heart? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think it should be that one. Yeah. So, I'm not totally sure, so I'm going to check. I'm glad I really take this, I just realized. Awesome. So, if I pick a couple of points, um, I don't really need to pick theta. Let's pick, I mean, I don't really need to pick pi. Let's pick pi over 2. Because we're pretty sure it's like oblong, you know, that it's, it's vertical. So, let's just check. If I pick pi over 2, what's the sign of pi over 2? One, right? One. Yeah. Negative three. And one times three is three. Is it zero? zero. Hmm. All right, pi over two is zero. That doesn't help me a whole lot. Oh, oh it could be. I? That could be the butt. Yeah, that doesn't really help me because I know that's the where this is going to come yeah. in, but it doesn't help me with like, the orientation of it. What about three pi over two? The sine of three pi over two is negative one. Negative one. So times this is positive three. So now we've got six. So 3 pi over 2, I'm 6 in this direction. I still don't know. Well, okay. doesn't mean I'm going to look like this. Yeah. Or it could be the other way. But that that indentation has to come in at 0. Oh, it has to? It does. Oh, okay. yep. um, and then where were these points? I don't know if it matters. We can always plug in like pi. And see what we get. If I do plug in pi, zero. sine of pi is zero, so I just have three. So then this is at three and negative three. And there you go, you've got it. All right, let's do the second one. Everyone who's not 
down here. I'm not going to explain anything to you. Just kidding. Okay, so I know this isn't the cardioid. I know it's like the limason thing. I don't remember if it has a loop or not. It would. Does it? If, you, yeah. if, you, if this uh, one's if smaller than this, doesn't it have a loop? Well, if you make three cosine theta, if that can be zero, then that means there's a circle in there with r equals two. Wait, say that again? If three cosine theta can be zero, then that means you can have an equation. It would be like you have r equals two. That's okay. really interesting. I never, ever thought about it that way. That's zero. But can't you always do that? Cosine of. I guess, well, it just works with. Like, so let's do this one, too. I want to add one to that list. Because we just saw when the two numbers were the same. What if I did 3 plus 1 cosine theta? It'd still be the same idea, right? But I don't think that one has a loop. No, that doesn't have a loop. I graphed it one time. Yeah, that doesn't have a loop. Hmm. Well, you just said it has to mean something, but I don't know what. Like, in, you know, we need to find out something like that. Can it be like hmm. the diameter of the loop? Yeah, it's just like, I, yeah. There must be some flaw in that, but I don't know what it is. That's cool. All right, so I, I'm pretty sure when this is smaller than this, we do know it has a little loop. When this is not smaller than it, we're, it's going to like just come in a little bit. So let's see kind of what the difference is. Um, if this is cosine, we think it should be sideways. So there should be like a loop here and then continue. But I'm going to plug in some points. If I plug theta to be 0, what do I get? Cosine is 0. 3, 5 is 1. So I should get 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have a point here. Do you think that's the inner loop or no? No. And when I add those two numbers up, 2 and 3, that's going to be like the biggest part of the curve away from 0. If I pick um, pi just because the cosine of pi is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So I have a point at pi negative 1 there. That's the little loop. So if you get this Limasson thing, and both points on the x-axis are on the same side of the y-axis, the, the closer one to 0 is the loop. The further one away from 0 is like the big part. So I know that this is going to loop around like this. And it's going to come back. Uh, it's not good. <laughs> Hold on. And I'm not kind of moving away from that. I just want to show. So this one, how do I know it has a loop or it doesn't? Well, if I plug some numbers in for this, if I put in 0 and pi, the cosine of 0 is 1, times 1 is 1, plus 3 is 4. So I have a point at 0, 4. And then if I put in pi, cosine of pi is negative 1, and 3 plus negative 1 is 2. So at pi, I'm at 2. See the difference between where I had the two points for this one and where I had the two points for this one? This one gave me a, a loop because one was here and one was here. They're both on the same side of the y-axis, so this was a point from the loop. These graphs only touch the x-axis twice. So sometimes if it's a circle, it only touches it one, two times. Or whatever these curves are, it's only going to touch it the two times. Oh, I, actually, I guess I mean three, because it's also going to touch it here. But you're really going to get only two different choices from zero and pi. And it's either going to be the inner loop, or it's going to be like an outer thing. So in this case, this is going to come in, come in like this. You don't really need to know if it looks like that, or if it looks like that, it doesn't really matter, who cares. There is a difference. If I plugged in like um, 3 pi over 4, I'd probably get a different number for this than I do for this. So they'd be a little bit different, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you know that this, these don't have inner loops and the other one does.
or stop till they come back? Yeah. Like they're coming back? No, tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs>